fact, I was shocked when I went to one manufacturing facility and the uh, manufacturer asked me, Mr. President, we are manufacturing products that are globally acclaimed. We are supplying to India, we are supplying to Pakistan, we are supplying to Europe, but we cannot supply to Kemsa. You know? And that is when I took the decision that enough is enough in Kemsa. We just have to get it right. And I want to promise you that uh, it's not going to be a one-off. That is going to be the tradition of Kenya going forward. We are going to manufacture our products locally. And we are not just going to manufacture our products using our local manufacturing capabilities. It is also my responsibility to make sure that the products you are manufacturing in Kenya also find a market in ESC, find a market in Comesa, find a market in our continent, because your facilities are world class. Your facilities manufacture products that meet international standards. And we are going to even provide affirmative action. If in the event that you cannot compete with some of the big brands out there, we are going to have affirmative action for locally manufactured products. We have given very clear instructions to all our public entities that buy pharmaceutical products, starting with Kemsa, that we will not import any product that is being manufactured locally. In fact, going forward, where we have at least three manufacturers of a product, we should never import that product into Kenya. Let the competition between the players, the manufacturers in Kenya, is sufficient for us to get value for uh, the drugs and the pharmaceutical products that we are looking for. For the first time, I have been told by some of the pharmaceutical companies in Kenya when we issued this instruction and we asked the ministry to make sure that the conditions and also um, the details and the specifications of the drugs that we are asking and of the pro pharmaceutical products that we are asking are not dictated by vendors. Because for a very long time, vendors went into the ministry and put their products as specifications for the supply of products. And that is why we have ended up with one supplier for 20, 30 years of a product that is being produced in Kenya, but they just twisted the specifications and we have said, that will not happen again. Yeah. I promise you, we are going to drain the swamp at the Ministry of Health. It will not continue to do the things they have done before. And if the same product with slightly different uh, specifications is available in Kenya, why do you insist? on that other product that's not available in Kenya, if it is not something else. So we have agreed, and I'm very happy that there are companies today who have been manufacturing in Kenya, they have never sold to Kemsa, but this year they have started selling to Kemsa. Our quest for universal health coverage, this time round, we have said we must succeed. And it is the reason we have taken time to interrogate all aspects that will make it possible to roll out universal health coverage without failure. We have looked at the framework, legislative framework, that will backstop and facilitate our universal health coverage delivery. I must congratulate Parliament that yesterday at least two pieces of legislation were concluded. And they have promised me that by Tuesday next week, 
they will also conclude the remaining two. So we will end up with four pieces of legislation that will support our delivery of universal health coverage in Kenya, which this function is part of the build-up activities towards 20th, when we will be launching the universal health coverage program nationally to live up to our commitment that health must not be a privilege for those who can afford, but it must be a deliverable by the government of Kenya for every Kenyan, starting from the home state. And that is why we are talking about Afia Nyumbani. The program that I launched uh, two weeks ago, where we are kitting all our 100,000 community health promoters is to ensure that in every home state, in every village in Kenya, there is a community health promoter who will work with the communities to transit and to actualize our paradigm shift from being focused on curative health provision to one that we do preventive as well as promotive health interventions. The health sector has great potential to significantly contribute to industrialization through intensive investments in local manufacturing of health products and technologies. I take note that Kenya is currently the largest producer of pharmaceutical products in the common markets and Southern Africa region, COMESA, supplying almost 50% of the region's market. I'm optimistic that with close collaboration between the government and manufacturers of health products, Kenya's manufacturing industry will expand its market share in Africa as more opportunities become available as a result of both COMESA, EAC, SADC combined into the apartheid uh, uh, treaty agreement and also the expanded Africa continental free trade area. It will be my responsibility to you to make sure that we not only make it possible for you to invest in and thrive in Kenya, but to also tap into the opportunities that come with the expanded market into ESC, into COMESA, tripartite uh, space uh, between SADC, COMESA, and ESC, and on to the Africa continental free trade area. You have seen what we are doing, trying to consolidate the African market into one single market to make it easier for investors like yourselves and others that will be partnering with you to build capacities that would not, only, would not only supply products, health products to Kenya, but to our region as well. Previous efforts have not had a significant impact and pharma imports continue to grow faster than exports. With the country importing over 70% of the total value of its pharmaceutical needs annually. Indeed, the government is aware that local manufacturing requires significant support to compete with a highly competitive multi-billion dollar global pharmaceutical market. Statistics indicate that Africa's pharmaceutical industry is growing rapidly, reaching US dollars 28.56 billion, about 4.2 trillion in 2017, from 5.5 billion, about 814 billion a decade earlier. While developing countries' markets are stagnating, it is predicted that the African market will increase from 56 billion to 70 billion dollars, a whole 10 trillion, 10.3 trillion by 2030. A reason enough to strategically position Kenya's pharmaceutical industry to leverage on this opportunity. I am aware of the long-standing challenges local manufacturers face. And my administration is committed to ensuring that by 2026, 
mark these dates, they are important to you as manufacturers. At least 50% of the medicines listed in the Kenya Essential Medicines list will be manufactured and available locally. We will work with you and all the other stakeholders to coordinate activities among financiers, industry, and technical providers to reduce transaction costs, ensure critical investment in system enablers, and support manufacturers in dealing with various requests for assistance. Coordination across the country will ensure diversified supply and a viable market for new products. Furthermore, the Government of Kenya will support the establishment and strengthening of the requisite regulatory and policy framework to facilitate the achievement of this commitment. My administration will also ensure that we work through regional initiatives and agencies to support local manufacturers to achieve the World Health Organization's good manufacturing practice standards to not only produce for Kenya, but also open up the market for the export of products outside the region and all the way into the continent. Infrastructing local manufacturing for increased access and affordability of health products and technologies, job creation and economic growth for Kenya, my administration commits to increase tariff lines for imported health products and technologies as outlined in the East Africa Community Common External Tariff of 2017. We will also adequately cater for this and closely link products, but reduce ambiguities and avoid hindrance to market access. The government will also set aside infrastructure, including land. In fact, we are in the process of identifying the former land that belonged to Del Monte in Moranga. I have discussed with the county government of Moranga. They have set aside 500 acres for a special economic zone, 200 of which will be made specifically for pharmaceutical companies.